Hello musicians, this is Corey Taylor from skilledmusician.com where we are helping musicians improve. Thank y'all so much for checking out this video. Now in this video, we're looking at left hand copying ideas and we're focusing on the rhythmic aspect. Now this video is actually part one of a two part comping series. I um, in the second part, we're gonna look at harmonic comping ideas. Um, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Um, now, in the description box, I have linked to a free lead sheet uh, for the F Blues, in case you're not familiar with that, um, which is what we use to kind of um, demonstrate these ideas. Um, and then we also have sheet music that you can purchase um, that lists these comping exercises um, um, beyond what we even covered in the video. So make sure you, you get that. Um, lastly, make sure you comment your suggestions for new videos because we want to make the videos that you want to see. All right, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. So what does comping do? Well, comping provides the harmonic and rhythmic palette or foundation for the soloist to improvise. So when I think of comping, I generally think of two types of comping. The first is rhythmically passive. This is steady, non-syncopated, kind of the same rhythm over and over again. And then the second type is rhythmically active, um, where you're reacting um, to what's happening around you, listening and responding. Um, and this oftentimes is really syncopated. Um, so we're going to talk about both of those types in this video. So let's use the F blues as our template to demonstrate these comping ideas. And you'll sometimes hear me playing ahead. Uh, or that's another word for melody. Um, and that melody would be from uh, a jazz standard called Straighten on Chaser. Um, so oftentimes I might make it my own uh, melody. So we just depend. So the first thing you want to do is be fully confident on the chords to um, the song you're playing. And in this case, we're using the F Blues. Now, if you're not familiar with the F Blues, I'll include a, a lead sheet in the description box of uh, free. Just click on it and you can download it. Um, that just has basic F Blues. All right, so we're gonna start off with just simply playing um, one chord per bar. Um, and it's gonna be on beat one. So it's gonna be really simple, but it's gonna show that we actually know how to play this song and know the chords that go with it um, before we get into the more uh, rhythmically complex stuff. So here we go, let's do um, F blues and just do one chord per bar. Here it is. <laughs> so now, now that we have that, we've shown that we can play through this particular song using the basic chords. Now we're going to start adding some rhythms. Now my first rhythm that I absolutely love, I fell in love with this when I first discovered it, was the Charleston rhythm. Um, and I happen to be from South Carolina, so uh, Charleston definitely resonates with me. Um, and what this rhythm is, it's a quarter note, it's a, actually it's a dotted quarter note, followed by an eighth note. And so it starts on beat one, and the eighth note hits on the end of two. So one, and two, a one, and two, a one, two, a one, two, and sorry, kind of wrong, one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four. You hear it? So now let's go through our F blues and move through the changes and see if we can't use this rhythm through the F blues. Let's see what happens. So here it is. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to do a variation where we're going to shift this Charleston rhythm over by eighth note. And so the first beat lands on the and of one, and the second beat, the second that eighth note lands on the on down beat three. So we get one and two, three. I want and two, three. I want and two, three. I want and two. All 
All right, and so you can see how that, that rhythm works. So now we're gonna continue shifting this Charleston rhythm. I'm gonna shift it to start on beat two. And so that means the eighth note lands on the end of three. And I'm gonna play a different blues head now. Let's see what happens. I'll just make one up. One, two, ready, and. <laughs> Let's see if we can't move it even further. Let's start our trust rhythm on the end of two. And so that means our eighth note lands on beat four. So it goes one, two, and three. So we can definitely continue shifting this rhythm um, throughout the bar or even over the bar. Um, and so what I've done is I've created a, um, some sheet music where I sh actually show you um, this shifting and you can definitely take a look at it. So definitely get that in the description box below. So another idea I definitely love doing is just taking one chord, moving that chord throughout the measure. The same way we did with our Charleston rhythm. So um, we started off by doing a whole, a whole note on beat one, but we can definitely take this through different parts of the measure. So we can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, like this, or we can go one, and two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, or, or even on beat two, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, or beat and of two, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. Um, so a fun experiment is seeing if you can do one chord per measure and each measure shift where the chord lands. Um, let me see if I can do it. <laughs> so we're gonna do beat one, and of one, beat two, the end of two, and so forth. Here it is, beat one, and of two, one, beat two, and of two, B three and a three B four and a four. <laughs> All right, and so you can see you can really experiment with this. And so now what we're doing is we're building towards a rhythmically active um, left hand comping. So one of the differences between rhythmically passive, which is kind of the steady state, there's you know, like we're doing the Charleston rhythm, you know. Um, versus rhythmically active is that with rhythmically passive, you're not really listening to the soloist um, trying to respond to what they're doing because you're keeping this steady, steady left hand going, which is cool. And the solo in this, in this case would be your right hand. Um, so you're not really paying attention to what your right hand doing. Your left hand is on kind of autopilot while your right hand plays on. Right, your left hand is kind of on autopilot. But what we want to do when you're rhythmically active, um, you're responding to what the soloist, or in this case, your right hand is doing. Um, so one good rule of thumb is to fill the space when the soloist stops playing. And since your right hand is the soloist, you know exactly when you stop playing. Um, so even if we took, look at, took, took the melody, straight no chaser, um, and I'll just try to play it this time and let me show you and you'll see me filling the spaces. So here we go. So you can see even on this melody, um, which is really, really active, you notice I wasn't really playing so much, but in, in any time I had space, I would definitely play. So now um, what I want to do is I just want to take a short little solo. And what I want to do is start rhythmically passive, kind of playing something repetitive. 
and then I want to move to playing something a little more rhythmically active where I'm trying to fill the space um, where my right hand stops soloing. So let's give it a try. So I hope you, you can see how you move from rhythmically passive to kind of this steady same rhythm. And then you can move to rhythmically active where you're responding to the line and all the drills that we covered in this video will help you be able to respond freely without hesitation. Um, so don't be overwhelmed, just master one idea and continue to master one idea after another and your playing will dramatically improve. So remember to comment your ideas and suggestions for new videos in the comment section below because we want to make the videos that you want to see. So again, my name is Corey Taylor from skilledmusician.com where we are helping musicians improve. So hopefully this video has helped you improve. So until the next one, be blessed and happy practicing.